Hello everyone, my name is Stephen Berlin and this is my series on dreaming, lucid dreaming and transcendent states of consciousness accessible through your dreams. Now, uh, before we set sail into the series, uh, we need to acknowledge the albatross that's going to be accompanying us on our voyage. And that albatross is this, the dreaded dream journal. And anyone out there who has ever started a dream journal knows what I'm talking about. You start out with the best of intentions, like a New Year's resolution. And then, how long does your dream journal last? A week? Maybe two. But, generally speaking, it comes to an end. It is a discipline. It is work. And after all, you got to get up and go to work. You don't really have time for this. You know, you get up in the middle of the night and you write your dream journal, you might not get back to sleep. And then you're cranky the whole next day. So, written dream journals have issues. However, a dream journal is the quintessential tool that every master dreamer will tell you is absolutely a requirement. It's like your holy book. Without this, you'd have no dream recall, or very, very little. You wouldn't learn anything about your dreams. This is necessary. So, that being said, and knowing what the issues are, and having had to deal with those issues myself, I'm going to give you uh, a few tips to ease the pain, so to speak. All right, so do you want the uh, bad news first or the good? All right, I'll start with the bad news. Now, the bad news is you decide to keep a dream journal, and so you get everything set up on your nightstand. You got your lamp, you have your notebook, you have your pen. You go to sleep. You wake up in the middle of the night, and you're in this groggy dream state, and you're still halfway in the dream, and you realize, oh, I'm supposed to be keeping my dream journal. And uh, while you're thinking this, the first thing is you have to come up with a decision. Uh, do you want to stay in your dream? Which when you're groggy and it's kind of a good dream, it's really hard to wrench yourself out of that dream and deliberately interrupt it and wake up. Because who knows, if you stay in the dream, maybe you'd get lucky in the produce department. So that's always a tough call. Now, if you do stay in your dream, chances are you're going to forget it. So, if you do decide to uh, go ahead and interrupt the dream and do your dream journal and be a good little boy or a good little girl and, you know, turn on the light and pick up your notebook and your pen and do your assignment, well, you will wake up with a payoff because you will have your dream journal and, ah, I'm off and running. I'm doing a good job. Okay, well, that's uh, essentially problem number one. The second problem is you're going to wake up and, and usually think, well, before I do my dream journal, I have to go to the bathroom. Well, don't go to the bathroom. Hold it. Because when you get out of bed and start walking toward the bathroom, your dreams start swimming away in all directions at the speed of dark. And you will realize how quickly that is over time. This is not a joke. So you'll learn not to move very much because when you move, your dreams start leaving. Now, uh, it's also true in the same regard that don't think that the simple act of waking up from your dream, rolling over, turning on the light, grabbing your pen and your notebook and getting into position, and in my case, being old, I'm going to be 60 within a year, you know, putting on my glasses, all of that is disturbing my dreams and they are, once again, uh, pretty much dissolving. So, uh, these are issues. So, there is a, so now I'm going to get on into the good news. The good news is, just go out and buy yourself one of these. This happens, to, this is a micro cassette recorder. This happens to be a Sony. It, it, you open it up. It has a little micro cassette in it. You can get digital versions of these. I, I don't care for digital versions because I'm likely to accidentally erase them. But the tapes hold up to an hour, and I just set this next to my bed. Now, when I wake up in the middle of the night and I'm in that groggy state, sort of half, you know, between two worlds, between waking and dreaming, and I can't quite make a decision whether I want to wake up or not, well, and I call that uh, that state purgatory, I, I reach over, I pick this up, I push a button, it comes on, 
a little red light comes on to let you know that you're dreaming if you want to glance down at it and the microphone's right there on top and you just start talking and this keeps up with you unlike your pencil or your pen and this doesn't run out of ink it may run out of tape in which case you open it up and flip it over which you know is not rocket science you get really good at it so uh, and there's always a spare sitting there just in case so this is what I use. Now this is a three-tier level of learning. This is better than a written dream journal in my opinion because the first level of learning is when you start just recording your dream, even if you never listen to the tapes, even if you never transcribe the tapes, just by being in that in-between ideal state you will learn that you, how much of your dream you can recall. As you're talking along, as fast as you're talking, other things in your dream start coming to you. They're attached to that by association and a flood of material comes back and then every now and then you'll even hook a dream that was swimming upstream in some tributary and you'll be able to reel it back in and you get a much earlier dream scene. It's fascinating. So that is tier number one of your learning even if you do nothing else but this. Of course, you will forget most of your dreams if you don't end up listening to them. And that's what you learn in the second tier when you actually take the time a month, a week later to push the button and listen to your dreams. And if you have the time to listen to me, you should have the time to do that. And when you start listening to your dreams, the first thing you're going to recognize is, let's see, I had that dream, and then I recorded that dream, and I still forgot it. But here I am listening to it. And then you move on to the, and you discover associations and things you didn't discover before. Now you're looking at it for the first time with your full waking consciousness. Now then you go to the third uh, tier of learning, which is actually transcribing your dreams. And you'll learn, okay, that was just a typical anxiety dream. I'm not going to waste my time writing that down. Nothing in there of significance to me. And you will write down your more significant dreams. And then when you start writing down your... Now when you start out, you start writing down things like examples of day residue and faulty logic and false remembrance. That'll be very interesting. But once you learn that phenomenon, then you won't write all of that down. You just write especially, particularly interesting creative versions of that may deserve being written down. And then your best dreams, the best of the best, your transcendent dreams, your out-of-body experiences, your alien abductions, whatever your thing is, Anything that is really, you know, visiting a dead relative, you know, whatever that's really significant, then buy a special journal or book for that. Now, this one happens to be hand-bound in black goat. Now, I'm not saying that to impress you. I did it to impress the person that finds this book when I'm dead so that this does not end up in the trash can in the city dump. Hopefully, the, the quality of the book will indicate to someone the quality of the contents and this a black goat might outlive this old goat. Okay, well I'm going to move on next into transcendent states of consciousness and dreams and I know there's a lot of people that don't really like that subject, they think it's all BS. Skip over that section then. But I will say in advance that I am very very careful not to suggest any metaphysical, paranormal, religious, scientific, anything interpretation of those experiences. I just want you to know about them. You can apply them to your own life and your own belief systems. And uh, I take some pride in being able to uh, to do that for you because these are essential and uh, so uh, that's about it. Uh, please enjoy the series and I am really grateful that you are here.